So when we fish the general area around Baja, we use a lot of live bait. It's got specialty systems in there that support that, but um, uh, we have to find places that make it. So there's gotta be enough biosphere. And what happens is that you turn on the lights for the boat and they're microorganisms and then krill, and it creates its own little biosphere because after the krill, then the mackerel come in. And sometimes after the mackerel come in, you'll have sea lions come in. So uh, we never know if we're gonna get a couple or none at all, or nobody shows up to the party. And then sometimes we get nights that look like National Geographic. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, we're still here. We're still doing our things. Some really, really exciting stuff's been happening lately. Aaron and I have been working really hard to exit our business and unwind our life in Southern California to nest it anyway, so we can begin full-time cruising. And uh, welcome to day one of full-time cruising. Today we left the cruise at 3 a.m. We're about to get to our first anchorage here in Southern Mexico on our way south. And this has now become our home. We've used Dragon as more of an adventure portal. Um, we loaded up with diesel and groceries and friends and gear and run off and have these epic adventures, but we're kind of on a bungee cord that brings us back to that life. Well, in all of that, I've had to learn some pretty important lessons about YouTube content creation. And one of those is that YouTube is a grind. It takes a ton of discipline to take this content, which is easy to create, because we're out here having fun anyway, and to sit down and put it together, audio, and give it some kind of storyline. And my hat's off to anybody that does it with any kind of consistency. If you're out here monetizing that, my hat is absolutely off to you. That's not my thing. I don't want anything that looks like a job. But I do want to get current because I'm so excited about what's happening today. So I've taken a bunch of the content that we've kind of stashed over the last handful of months and put together a couple of videos. They feel probably feel more like a montage or a best of, but there's some great stuff in there. And I'm anxious to get that stuff out so I can get to sort of today, which is the full-time game. It's what we've been working towards and we're there. So enjoy it. Dragon is all in a new spot for the summer, and in the fall. And this place is legendary for its good services and awesome vibes. 
Um, tacos, yeah. We like tacos. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty full. We didn't wind up in our the slip that we were assigned, but pretty happy with the one that we did get. Crazy. And I'll yeah. tell them I don't need to change it. Yeah. Let's go meet our new friend and check in. I don't know. I'm looking at some of these plates. That looks good. Let's wow. start it. We are John and Aaron Ellis on Dragon. Oh, hey, hey. how are you? Pleasure to meet you finally, Wendy. Yes, yeah. finally. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, we did. Very good. This is so badass. Absolutely amazing. We're in a cove in Loretto. And it's um, jug full of herring and pelicans. And there's terns and boobies and all kinds of seabirds. Look at this pelicans going off. Boat full of happy people over there on Dragon. Does it get better? I'll see how it can. So it doesn't look like this week is going to turn out like expected. Um, I was supposed to be down doing a little bit of maintenance in advance of uh, a trip that we've been planning with my brothers and uh, my cousin Kevin to cruise around Loretto and catch some fish and spend some time in the water. And uh, instead, um, this big old bastard got brewing. And I've been watching the models, but um, it's been pretty consistent. As a matter of fact, it's been um, uh, progressively getting more focused on uh, running up the Cortez. Uh, so we've got to have, uh, have to pivot and start focusing on uh, taking care of the boat and getting ready for my first big storm. Uh, I got some lines made up by the boys at uh, West Marine. Victor, thank you so much for taking care of that on really short notice. Uh, so I've got a uh, handful of much larger dock lines. I've got some extra fenders, inflatables that I need to break out and uh, put those out as well, um, as well as all of the kind of prep that you would do for a storm. Never been through anything like this, so I'm reaching out to um, uh, the captain community as well as guys on the NOG, uh, that's the Nordhaven Owners Group, to, um, which is amazing, by the way. 
uh, to get some input. Uh, a lot of the guys on the East Coast have been through this routine so many different times, you know, given the frequency of um, storm events in Florida about this time of year. So, um, but I'm a rookie and trying to trying to get ready. So uh, on my way down to TJ here shortly, um, cross the border at CBX, jump on a flight and be down in Loretto um, uh, early this evening and uh, start prepping from there. I've got some extra gear for um, this guy, Brian, on some boat named Delos that, uh, that uh, agreed to bring down for him. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting him. And stay tuned, man, we'll see what happens. Could be interesting, uh, could be worth watching. This is what it looks like post-storm. K rolled through about 36 hours ago. And now the desert just that quickly. You know, there were two storms that kind of blew through this area, it had precipitation, both of them. And it's just turned the desert green. Pretty hairy there though, for a couple of 12 hours though. But now it's back to being the prettiest version of Loretto. <laughs> 